In 2020, over 38,000 Americans died in motor vehicle traffic crashes, the largest number of fatalities since 2007. This rise is particularly surprising because cars are safer than ever. So how is this possible? Well, it's obviously a loaded question, but for one, our car crash tests are way outdated and have a major flaw. In 1965, a new book shook the automobile industry. Unsafe at any speed, accused automakers of intentionally neglecting safety measures in cars. Uh, there were all kinds of things that we did in cars that were really unsafe. For example, baby seats were hung on the back of the seat, which actually projected the baby forward should there be an accident. Kids roam freely in the backs of station wagons, and we didn't have safety belts. Congress responded with the first federal safety standards, which led to the creation of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA. But still, automakers were reluctant to include new safety features. When I was at the uh, NHTSA, I went and met with the vice presidents of all the major auto companies. And what was fascinating was Ford, for example, said, we know that safety doesn't sell. In 1956, a Ford car keys its advertising to seat belts and safety padding and is a financial disaster. And consumers really didn't care. And I thought to myself, you know, something's wrong here. So how could NHTSA get consumers to care? Crash tests, especially those at higher speeds. These publicly available tests showed consumers that there was a big difference between car A and car B. The resulting public pressure convinced automakers to take safety seriously. NHTSA tests primarily use a system known as the government's five-star safety ratings program. They also have a compliance testing system. Collectively, the tests simulate and measure full frontal and head-on crashes, as well as side impact crashes with barriers and poles, plus rollover resistance. They put anthropomorphic dummies in the front seats of the cars, and they measure the force of that crash on the head, the chest, and the thighs of the dummy. Those numbers get translated into a single index, and the government will give the car a one to five star rating, depending on how well it performs. So all of that sounds really good, and it was a great start. The problem is, these tests haven't really changed since then. And that's a problem for a bunch of reasons. And one big issue in particular, which we'll get to in a second. So let's start with what advocates call starflation. Basically, it means that every new car these days gets a four or five star rating. That's because modern cars have no problem passing standards that aren't regularly updated. The car makers worked hard to improve their vehicles so that they would perform well in these crash tests. It's like using a graphing calculator in a math class in the 1920s. You'd pass that class with flying colors. In contrast, the Euro NCAP has 21 different tests, which also take into account pedestrian and cyclist safety, child seat installations, and rear seat occupants. And these NCAP tests were actually born in the US. But so many other countries, especially European countries, Australia, have taken it to the next level while we've been stuck in neutral. In Europe, uh, there's a totally different attitude towards the importance of building products that meet the needs of the consumer. SUV and pickup trucks also tend to be inherently more problematic. While these cars provide significant safety features like higher seats, they're also more deadly to those outside the vehicle. Pedestrians are two to three times more likely to die when struck by an SUV or pickup truck compared to a sedan. But there's one problem that some argue supersedes them all outdated dummies. And that's especially bad news for women, like me. Women are 73% more likely to be injured and 17% more likely to die. And in 2019, there were more licensed female drivers in the US than males. And yet their dummies do not represent them. Dummy technology has not really evolved as it should. The dynamics of a female body are so much different than the dynamics of a male body. Unfortunately, what the scientists did at NHTSA and in the dummy manufacturing world is they simply made a smaller male 
dummy rather than really focus on the way a woman is built so that the dummy can reflect exactly how a woman's body would perform in a typical crash. Researchers are still studying exactly why they differ, but explain it could be due to the differences in pelvic bone shape and how that interacts with the seatbelt. And these female dummies weren't even incorporated until 2003. And in some cases, these dummies are still in the passenger seat. Why did it take so long to even put the female in the car? That's a fascinating question. And I hate to say what I think the answer is, is because the program was run by men and they just didn't think about it. Today, it's so obvious that one would not relegate a crash test to a single body type, regardless of the male-female thing. These are the female dummies NHTSA uses, representing the fifth percentile of women. One weighs 108 pounds and stands at four feet, 11 inches. And her slightly smaller cousin is the same height, but weighs 97 pounds. For reference, the average American woman today, over 20 years old, is around five foot four inches and weighs 170 pounds. Male dummies, on the other hand, represent the 50th percentile of men. Both stand at five foot nine inches, but one weighs 171 pounds, while the other weighs 160. And that's the other thing. These dummies were created in the 1970s, basing them off of the average 1970s male. Since then, not only have cars changed, but so have people's bodies. Americans are now increasingly overweight. In 2020, the CEO of crash dummy manufacturer Humanetics said, if you have a body mass index of 30 or more, you're 80% more likely to die in a crash. But NHTSA says that while they are working to develop more accurate human body models to represent more genders, sizes, and ages, they say that real world data also suggests that smaller females were at a greater risk of incurring injuries and more likely to be seated in the right front passenger position in frontal crashes. They claim that, to date, there are no state-of-the-art test dummies available from any manufacturer worldwide to represent mid-sized women. In a statement provided to Cheddar News, NHTSA's Director of Media Relations said, in part, NHTSA continues to examine data to evaluate remaining gender disparities in fatality and injury outcomes and to determine how to eliminate them. NHTSA also says their funding is being used for the development of a 50th percentile female occupant model. In February 2022, over 65 U.S. representatives sent a letter to the Department of Transportation urging them to update dummy standards, especially female dummies. But getting these changes to be implemented? Well, that's a whole other story. Unfortunately, there is a cost to doing this. And the trade-offs, you know, have to be made by society, by people who are buying cars, by the manufacturers. He adds that more sophistication in the already developed NHTSA tests would be a giant step forward. Because if these auto manufacturers can't score as highly, well, they'll be forced to change their cars and in turn create even safer vehicles, since no one wants to be bottom of the list. In the meantime, both academics and automakers are turning to new methods for improved testing, like these digitized crash systems that tailor to specific gender, weight, height, and BMI. Even though serious updates to safety testing is needed, NHTSA says they do use a computer simulated modeling system. Now, it's important to note that last month in March, NHTSA did propose updates to its five-star safety program, and you can pause to read some of them. For the first time, the proposal addresses technology recommendations for those outside the vehicle, but gender disparity questions still remain. The proposal is available for public comment for 60 days. Because at the end of the day, not only are car crashes tragedy, but also a major public health problem. Until new, better safety standards are implemented across the board, car safety advocates recommend thoroughly inspecting all cars before you buy them.